Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to make a very satisfying flying body animation. We're going to add it on enemy death to make it very impactful and satisfying. Let's get started. So I have my scene here, I have a player character, enemies are currently being spawned, and I can damage them with my sword. Now, right now, when they die, they simply disappear. Let's make them fly. Now I have a prefab here with a sprite of the enemy dead body. So when an enemy is killed, after the enemy is destroyed, we want to spawn the dead body and send him flying away. So let's begin by creating a new C sharp script and name it flying body. Okay, now in here, let's remove this and add a public a static void, a create function that will create our flying body. So inside, we're going to receive a transform for a prefab of our dead body, a vector three for the spawn position, and another vector three for our fly direction. So in here, let's instantiate our prefab into our spawn position with a quaternion.identity. This will be our flying body transform. Okay, now on this transform, we want to add the component for our flying body. Flying body, flying body, okay. And now we want to call a setup function on our flying body component. For that setup, we're going to send it the fly direction. Okay, great. So now down here, let's add a private void setup on our setup, we're going to receive a vector 3 for our fly direction, and we're going to store it as a member variable. So now on our private void update, we are going to move the transform towards the fly direction. So transform.position plus equals fly direction times time dot delta time. Okay, so this class looks good for now. Let's go back into our game handler script. And in here you can see I just have a pretty basic code. I got the camera which is following the player. I got a reference to my player, a list for my enemies. In here the player is being instantiated. I'm setting up the list, setting the camera to follow the player, and I'm using function periodic to spawn an enemy every one and a half second. Function periodic is part of the CodeMonkey utils, which you can grab at unitycodemonkey.com. And the camera follow script is part of a previous video, which you can check out. So now in here, my player handler script is actually sending an event for on enemy kill. So we're going to use that to spawn our dead body. So since this is triggered after the enemy is killed, right here is where we want to go into our flying body dot create. We're going to send our prefab for the enemy dead body, which we'll set up soon. Right here, this event passes the event args, which contains the enemy handler, and the enemy handler contains a get position. So this will give us the position of the enemy that was just killed. And for our fly direction, we're going to calculate it, fly direction, which will be based on the enemy's position minus the player handler dot get position. And we're going to normalize it. Okay, and send it in here. So now up here, let's add another serialized field. Private transform pf enemy dead body. Okay, so now when this event is fired, we're going to create a enemy body, which we'll call this function. So let's see if the enemy, if the body is spawned and flies away back into our scene here, let the code compile, go into here and we're going to drag our reference to our enemy dead body. So let's test it. Okay, I'm here, when an enemy spawn, I'm going to hit him three times and there you go. The dead body was spawned and it's moving very slowly. We obviously need to make that go a lot faster, but the bodies are currently being spawned. Okay, great. So back into our script here, let's first make a float for our fly speed, and let's say about 150 should be good, and that's what we're going to multiply. 
Okay, and now right now this game object is just flying until infinity, so let's make sure it gets destroyed after some time. So up here let's make a private float timer and an update simply increase the timer was equals time dot delta time. Now if timer is bigger than let's say one second, that's probably more than enough time for the body to leave the screen and we're going to destroy this game object. Okay, let's see if the game object is being destroyed and if it is moving faster. Okay, here I am, where's, there he goes, boom, he goes away and he vanishes. You can see on the hierarchy that the dead bodies get spawned and get destroyed after some time. And they are correctly moving in the correct direction with a decent speed. Probably increase that a little bit more. Okay, looks good for now. So back in our code here, we're going to make it move a little bit faster. And for a better effect, let's also increase the scale. Go into transform.localScale, and we're going to increase it by vector3.1 times the scale speed times time.delta time. For our scale speed, let's make it uh, about 20f. Okay, let's test it out. Okay, there it goes, and boom, there it goes. <laughs> it's a bit too much, but yep, that's the effect we want. Okay, back into our code, and let's reduce this for a little bit. And actually, for start, we're going to want to start a little bit more. So transform the local scale equals, let's make our vector 3.1 times, let's increase at double the size. So the starting scale is already bigger. And let's see. Okay, there you go, it's looking pretty good. Now the speed actually has to go a lot faster, but it's going good. So for our speed in here, we're going to make it at 30. For our scale, let's just make it seven, but it's looking good for now. Okay, so for another effect, let's add some rotation. So let's store our Euler float Euler Z and in here on transform.local Euler angles we're going to set to new vector 3 0 0 no Euler Z and our Euler Z will increase by Euler speed times time dot delta time so for our Euler speed, let's make it uh, 360, which is one rotation, but that's not enough. That would be just one rotation per second. We want this to make a bit faster, so let's say four rotations per second. Okay, let's test it out and see how it's going. Okay, here I am, and I can hit him. Boom, there he goes, flying away. And the speed is actually still a little bit lower. Let's increase the speed a little bit more. This is all about tweaking values to make it as satisfying as possible. Okay, now in here in this scene, I also have my blood handler class, which is spawning those blood particles that you see. So let's add that while he's also flying. So I'm going to go into my blood handler class and spawn blood for the amount let's say five particles on location transform dot position and for direction will be the opposite of our fly direction so fly direction times minus one f okay let's see if those particles are being spawned okay there's the enemy i'm gonna hit him boom oh look at that there you go they're always going and leaving a trail which makes killing the enemies quite satisfying Okay, so as a final effect, let's add some screen shake. I have a function here in my camera. And when the enemy is killed, let's just create a new shake. I have an intensity, let's say two, and a timer for 100 milliseconds. And let's give it one final test. Okay, here's my player, there's an enemy, boom, 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 there he goes. 
And there you go, we made a very satisfying flying that body. So if you want to add a very over the top effect on enemy death, you can use this to make your game feel much more satisfying to play. Okay, so there you go. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, see you next time.